Topping NX4 is getting lots of praise. It's a good portable amp deck, and I think it makes a good portable option. But what about the Monolith THX portable? Does it make sense to spend twice the money on the Monolith offering? And can you hear twice the sound difference? Let's take both for a spin and find out. In the NX4 unboxing, I said I was surprised and impressed with the product's power output. It was able to easily drive headphones up to 300 ohms, and it had no problem pushing the Modhouse Argon on high gain. The Monolith Portable is also a powerful amp DAC. It's got 47 milliwatts more power at 32 ohms than the NX4. Where the NX4 has 293 milliwatts at 32 ohms, the Portable has 340 milliwatts. This is definitely a noteworthy difference, but it's not the full story. You see, monolith amplifiers have a habit of steeply decreasing power output as resistance increases, and the portable is no different. At 300 ohms, the portable provides just 46 milliwatts. The NX4, by contrast, offers 114 milliwatts. This is two and a half times the power the monolith product provides. This is the reason why the NX4 is capable of driving higher impedance headphones so easily. Moreover, the NX4 has low and high gain, but the Monolith Portable does not. The DACs are also different. The Monolith has an AKM chipset and Topping uses a Sabre chipset. Both AMP DACs provide high-resolution audio compatibility. But where the NX4 supports DSD-512, the Portable can support only DSD-128. Monolith uses the AKM AK4493 DAC. You might think that the DAC is to blame for the limited DSD support, but you'd be wrong. The AKM spec sheet shows that the 4493 is capable of DSD-512. Manufacturers regularly hamper components on purpose, and it appears Monolith did that with the portable. On the other hand, the ES9038Q2M chip in the NX4 is also capable of more. The spec sheet indicates that this DAC supports DSD-1024. In reality, I am not convinced any of this DSD limitation is of merit. There are very few albums available in DSD, and DSD is very expensive, often at least double the cost of PCM recordings. If your music library does not include DSD, the limited DSD support in both devices is a non-issue. Moreover, it is highly unlikely you will ever notice any audible difference between DSD-128 and DSD-512. In other words, be wary of the DSD hype. There are additional differences between the two devices. The Monolith Portable has a menu system that offers filters, EQ, direct sense around, and a precise visualization of volume. In contrast, the NX4 has two switches that turn on high gain and bass boost, and obviously no LCD screen. Moreover, the Monolith has a THX788 amp module, and the NX4 does not. The two devices are similar in size, but the Monolith is a little bit larger. Both have smooth turning volume knobs, but the Monolith has a smoother one. Both devices have two micro USB inputs, one for charging, the other for data. Both have a line in and out and a 3.5mm output. Neither has balanced output. The battery life on both devices is different. Depending on your use, you can expect to get about 10 hours of continuous use from the NX4. Of course, your mileage will vary depending on the volume, impedance, the filters you activate, and whether you are using the device as a USB DAC or line-in amplifier. Topping says that as a line-in amplifier, the NX4 can be powered for up to 20 hours. It is my experience that the Monolith Portable has a battery life of about 7 hours, whether being used as line-in or USB DAC. Both devices connect immediately to both Windows and Mac OS. The NX4 and Monolith Portable will easily connect to Android devices. On my LG V30, I connected the NX4 and Monolith using a micro USB to USB-C cable. Connection can be established using an adapter as well. On iOS devices, you'll be a little frustrated if you've used the camera adapter kit to connect other DACs to your iOS device. Neither the NX4 nor the Monolith Portable will work off this adapter. Instead, you will need to purchase a Lightning to Micro USB data cable. You will need to make sure you buy a cable that is compatible with your version of iOS and device. In my estimation, there are really only two meaningful differences between the devices. First, that although the Monolith Portable has marginally greater amplification at lower impedances, the Topping NX4 has significantly greater amplification at higher impedance. Second, the menu system in the Monolith Portable opens up more usability options. You will notice, however, I did not highlight the THX amplifier. 
there is a reason. We will come to that later. In my experience, Sabre chipsets can be harsh and grainy. I try to avoid Sabre implementation because of this. However, Topping's implementation of the Sabre chip is well done. The DAC does not sound harsh, and the amplifier section does not elevate any grain. The NX4 sounds fairly neutral to me. I have also found that AKM chipsets can be similarly harsh as Sabre DACs. This occurs less often in my experience, however. On the Monolith Portable, the AKM chip sounds more analytical. Perhaps you could say that the Portable is more neutral than the NX4, or you could just as easily say that the Monolith Portable adds treble extension and emphasis that is not neutral. For this comparison, I use the Sennheiser HD700. I have more neutral headphones, but I wanted to know if I can pinpoint harshness or grain in either product. If one or the other accentuates treble or grain, the HD700 will help me figure that out. Further, I did not use any filters or EQ on either product during this test. The Monolith Portable does not sound harsh per se. There is a certain clarity to the treble that many will like. Those who are treble sensitive and have treble friendly headphones, well, you may be unhappy with the sound. What is evident is that the Portable offers clear sound. There is absolutely no muddiness. The bass is not elevated or muddled. The mids are clear and unaffected by the bass response. The treble is well separated from the rest of the frequency range. I found that the treble coming through the HD700 was just slightly below my personal threshold. I am somewhat sensitive to treble, and only one of the songs I played sounded ear-piercing. In the song Pure Water, the mids were clear. There was sparkle in the vocals, sparkle that is clearly part of the mix. It was not harsh or distorted. The bass remained controlled and clear. In vocal-centric songs like Want You Back and Why Am I Like This, the vocalists sounded crystal clear. Their voices shined through the mix, but their sibilants also came through. There were occasions when the sibilants became too much for me, which required me to bring the volume down many decibels. Orchestral pieces like Scurzo for X-Wings retained all the joyous treble energy of the brass and horns, and the clarity was outstanding. None of the instruments sounded muddy or distorted. There was clearly an elevated treble response in this song, so much in fact that I was forced to listen to the song on low volume. At higher volume, the Portable's rendition of the piece through the HD700 was far too ear-piercing for me. I had to limit volume to negative 18 decibels. Turning to the NX4, the presentation was meaningfully different. I did not need to use high gain to drive the HD700. I tried to volume match the NX4 to the monolith. In Pure Water, the song had noticeably less sparkle. Indeed, the sparkle is the most immediate and obvious element missing between the NX4 and Monolith Portable's renditions of this song. The NX4, by contrast, makes the song a little bit more laid back, with less sparkle results in less fatigue at higher volume. The bass sounded a few decibels boosted on the NX4. Furthermore, the mid seemed about one to two steps further ahead on the Monolith Portable. That could have been an impression because of the elevated treble, but I cannot be sure. In Want You Back and Why Am I Like This, the NX4 again provided slightly more relaxed presentation. The NX4 did demonstrate the sibilance in the vocalist, but not nearly as elevated as on the Monolith Portable. In fact, I estimate that the sibilance was emphasized at least 4 to 5 decibels on the Portable. The mids sounded clear and undistorted on the NX4. The separation of the vocalist sounded the same to me as on the Monolith. Scurzo for X-Wing clearly demonstrated that the monolith has a treble boost that the NX4 does not. I cannot say what decibel level I was listening to the NX4 at since the device does not have a readout. But throughout the test on the NX4, the volume knob remained at 1 o'clock on low gain. When Scurzo started playing, I had no need to turn down the volume. It was plenty loud, louder than most people should listen. But the treble did not sound harsh or ear-piercing. The treble was not rolled off or missing. By contrast, it appeared that the monolith added some artificial treble emphasis. Which is neutral? I don't know. I think it's fair to say that both are close to neutral. Does the monolith portable have an accurate presentation of treble, or does the NX4? Who knows? The biggest difference in the sound test is in fact the treble emphasis. Of course, if you have a warmer sounding headphone, the monolith's presentation will be different. There is no right or wrong here, just degrees of difference. Some will enjoy the treble extension, while others will prefer a more laid-back rendition. I have said many times before that the Monolith Portable sounds analytical, and that is still the impression. Indeed, compared to the NX4, the Monolith sounds certifiably cold. The NX4 in this comparison would be considered the more musical of the devices. 
In my opinion, the NX4 has a more natural reproduction of the frequency range, which may or may not be to your liking. We already know that the NX4 is a champ when driving high impedance headphones. We already compared the numbers to the Monolith Portable. Can the Monolith Portable drive the Modhouse Argon? I'm happy to say that the Monolith can indeed drive the Argon, but not at optimum performance. To be clear, the NX4 also did not drive the Argon like a desktop amplifier will. But there is a noticeable difference between the NX4 and the Monolith Portable. On the NX4, the Argon had their characteristic bass emphasis around 1 o'clock on high gain. On the Monolith Portable, that tight, thumping bass became apparent only around plus 4 decibels. That is exceptionally loud. There was still some sub-bass rumble that was missing, however. On the NX4, the rumble, bass impact were present at 1 o'clock on high gain, and the songs were just below maximum safe volume. I have been skeptical of THX hype, and every time a new non-THX amp is released, my skepticism is reinforced. The topping NX4 is dead silent. You can use a sensitive IEM or full-size headphones and you won't hear hiss or noise or distortion. If you try really, really hard using super sensitive IEMs, perhaps there is some chance you will hear hiss, especially at high gain. I tried that with the Campfire Audio Andromeda and frankly heard nothing. The Monolith Portable is also dead silent. Some, including Monolith, will attribute the low noise floor to the THX amplifier, and that's a fine point. But it is evident that you do not need a THX amplifier chip to get noiseless, hissless, distortionless sound. Test after test between THX amps and modern non-THX amps have shown that there is no audible difference at all regarding noise floor. If you end up with a faulty NX4 and hear noise, that's one thing, but you could say the same thing for a THX amplifier. The bottom line is that the NX4 is just as quiet as the monolith for all practical use. Who are these devices aimed at? Both the NX4 and monolith portable do a great job, both have gimmicks. The NX4's bass boost is nothing amazing. It does the job. It is nowhere close to iFi's use of bass and 3D surround sound, which is still the best I have ever heard. The Monolith THX module is, frankly, a gimmick. Monolith could have engineered the product differently to get a dark background, but that did not happen. Moreover, there is little point to having a THX amp when the power output is significantly low for high impedance headphones. If you want a small, powerful amplifier that is dead simple to use, well, the NX4 is an excellent option. If you want filters, EQ, direct sense around, then the portable is probably the only pocketable option around. Let me put it this way. The monolith portable is double the cost of the NX4 because of the menu and filters and EQ and sense around. If you need those features, then you should save up for the portable. However, if you can live without that stuff and just want a powerful amp, the NX4 is really hard to ignore. The noticeable differences between the sound of these products will be a huge factor as well. If you want more treble emphasis, then the Monolith Portable has it. If you want a more musical experience, well, then the NX4 has that. Also consider that your headphone pairings will alter the sound. A warmer headphone might perform better for you with the Monolith Portable than with the NX4. And a more analytical headphone might be perfect with the NX4 and unbearable with the Portable. In the long run, depending on your usage, the Monolith Portable might be a more meaningful purchase. Unless you have hard-to-drive headphones, the Portable has more usable features. Further, the EQ on the Portable will help shape the frequency presentation if you so desire. On the other hand, the NX4's price and power make it an all-rounder for a lot of people.